All right, gentlemen, it's our last week talking about the book of Boba Fett. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's going to be sad not having any Boba Fett coming up this weekend <laughs> or this uh, this Wednesday. Why? It won't be any different than when we had chapters five and six of Book of Boba Fett. That's not right, Nate. <laughs> why you got to do, why you gotta do that? Yeah, I guess you always hurt the ones you love. Uh, we'll give our official reactions to the Boba Fett finale. Uh, BB Nate will give us a crash course on the Court of Owls. And there were just way too many trailers this week to count. We'll talk about our favorites. This is... Is Tatooine Sons. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys recorded an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Square away, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm probably gonna just grab Gray Scarf too, and then have two cosplays. Cause one is because one could just be Daredevil from Defenders. Cause, okay, because he. Uh, so you're talking about cosplaying for mm-hmm. Pensacon. Right, you got right. a Court of Owls costume going for that. Sam, you're working on. I'm trying to get the Riddler from the new movie going. I think it'll look pretty cool once I'm once I'm done with it. If it if it works out, it's actually very difficult to find the stuff for at least for cheap. I don't, you know, I'm not made of money. So. Right, none of us are. Um, yeah, and I we may get me as Cobb Vanth. We're trying to. Maybe it should be Cobb Vanth from Vanth Refrigeration. Vanth. Vanth. That, was good. that was so okay. Funny story about that. Okay. Um, we were sitting there watching, I think Daredevil, mm-hmm. and or you were playing a game or something, and I was scrolling Facebook and I saw a meme. It was the that that meme Cobb Vanth Vanth Refrigeration, and so I sent it to Savannah because I figured she would you know appreciate it. It's funny. She didn't get it, did she? She did, but the issue was is I forgot that when I sent it to her, she was literally in the process of <laughs> watching the finale. Oh god! But it wasn't. She wasn't you know worried about it. I All just right. said, well, well we should probably to start the show. So welcome uh, to Tatooine Sons, a uh, pop culture podcast we are the only fan podcast to name a uh, canon star wars creature what? and to be endorsed by ryan johnson we believe that pop culture is the mythology of our generation that there is a story written on our souls these myths speak to that story and that is why we are talking about the book of boba fett finale yes, and the court of owls and all of those me- trailers mm. from the super bowl uh, i am david i'm the dad hi dad hi dad good evening gentlemen i'm honored uh, <laughs> to be joined every week by my two amazing sons nate yes Tell us about what you got going. Well, beware the court of owls is Ooh. certainly a warning. The Batman should heed the Batman, the as, in Batman. The movie, as in the movie, the movie, the Batman. All right, got to really find a way to better clarify. I that. know it's hard, Samuel. <laughs> yeah, I going? mean, uh, the book of Boba Fett finale is as divisive as anything in Star really? Wars, but we just don't get it for this one. Like, we really just can't. I see thought it. it was. I had a good time. I thought it was great. Yeah. But what are you talking about, Dad? It's a trailer overload this week. Uh, I'm not sure if we can handle it all, but we're going to try. But before we do that, I want to thank you guys for listening uh, to the show. We don't really talk about it much on on the podcast, but um, it's because of you guys um, every week tuning in to every episode that we, uh, for like the last two or three months, have been in the top 100 podcasts in our category on really? Apple Podcasts in the US, in UK, in Canada, in Australia. We've gotten there in Germany. Uh, we've gotten there in New Zealand um, in the entertainment news category. And so uh, we can't be in that um, you know category or in the uh, charting in our, in our category without you guys listening. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in every single week. We really, truly do appreciate it. If this is your first time listening uh, to Tattooing Sons, of pop, uh, pop, it's pop culture still. Right? It is still so pop culture. Are we switch- that was really wild. That was like stereo <laughs> and everything. Um, we're not, we didn't switch back to Star Wars or anything. I was almost almost called it. Here's the, here's the thing. You need to know this because um, next for uh, this Friday, 
Yeah. Uh, we are going to actually have an episode where we recap. Recap? Is that Re- recap? Re- recap? Yeah, recap? No, no, recant. Recant would no, be, recant would be back. like taking back. Taking That's not back. it. No. Recount was the other thing That's, I was thinking. That of. works. Um, the story of Turbis the Porg. Um, and that you hear in the opening of this mm-hmm. show and the Ryan Johnson moment and all of that. And here's the reason why. We were uh, at, at Pastor Stewart's house a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago. And pa- Pastor Stewart is has listened to probably the last. 30 episodes, mm-hmm. 40 episodes of this show, weeks right. like of our show, not mm-hmm. actual episodes, but weeks of shows uh, from it. And, you know, we hang out with, with Stuart all the time. Mm-hmm. You go over to his house every Sunday night and hang mm-hmm. out over there with, with Jay and, uh, and, and some other guys over there. Uh, it's like Stuart, he knows the show and he knows right. our story. And we were over at his house a couple weeks ago and I realized in the conversation that he didn't know the whole story of Turbis the Porg. Mm-hmm. And it's been a, well over two years since we've done that and I figured there's a lot of you listening to this show since we've kind of switched over from Star Wars to mm-hmm. full pop culture and we've now gotten all of you that are helping us become a part of the you know charting on on Apple Podcasts and everything that probably know just bits and pieces of the Turbis the Pork story and there's a lot more to it. Uh, right. Stuart was kind of blown away uh, by the end of the night when he was hearing all about that. So we're going to talk about that Friday. Um, we're excited about that. Um, I do want to read a review that we got from yeah. one of our, our hey. great listeners from Michael Hoover. Um, he is actually the host of A Certain Point of View uh, podcast and uh, he, we interact on Twitter a lot and he uh, gave us a review last a couple weeks ago. So I want to th- read this and thank you and encourage you guys to check him out as well. A Certain Point of View uh, podcast. Look it up. Uh, his uh, review says, let's be honest, there are a lot of toxic podcasts out there in the nerdum. Uh, Tatooine Sons is the opposite of that. A podcast that isn't afraid to be uh, honest about their opinions, but always does so through the lens of how much they love Star Wars and the MCU, etc. Highly recommend Long Live Turbis um, uh, with that. So thank you so thank much, you. Thank you. Uh, Michael, for that. We appreciate that. And thank you to our, our sponsor, um, Cufflinks.com. They have over 3,000 items on their website from Star Wars and Marvel and DC and Lord of the Rings and NFL and NCAA and Major League Baseball and uh, the NBA and everything else that you can think of. If you're a Rams fan, go on there and get an LA Rams uh, Cufflinks because congratulations to you guys for winning the Super Bowl on that. If you're a uh, Bengals fan, you can still, you can go, still go on there and get cufflinks too um they're not discounted or anything because you lost um all right uh but anyway thank you so much for uh, for sponsoring the show on that and uh, and if you're uh, a new listener please follow the show and continue to tune in i think that's all the, pl- the pleasantries we should probably get into talking about what stop talking wait, wait. about what we're talking about and talk about what we're going to talk about there you go yeah that's it well the finale of the book of boba fett was released last week and my consensus as a boba fett super fan it was everything I could have wanted. We'll talk about all our favorite moments and what's to come for the Manaverse in the future. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then, keep your secrets. Show. Well, well, no, no, not, not a terrible never show. It was a terrible, not a terrible show. show. It was disrespectful to Boba Fett, right. and then you're completely okay with it now. No, I said that it all came down when I did my review of episode five. I said it all came down to what the next two episodes did. Episode six still didn't do anything for Excuse Boba Fett. For Boba Fett, so I was still holding out hope for the finale to make my judgment and consensus as to the whole I series. I don't think you remember how absolutely frustrated I was frustrated five. you're absolutely right but upon seeing the finale it did what I needed it to do it tied everything together mm-hmm. gave Boba Fett what the treatment he deserved and now I'm okay with it. I guess That's it cool. wasn't the journey this time but it was the end that no the end. journey was part of the that, journey was though. a lot well, of fun the yeah. end made the journey exactly. worthwhile all right so, that makes sense anyway okay. all right Let's, uh, before we get any further, let's get y'all's reaction, your rating on a scale of one to ten knee rockets. Knee rockets. rockets. There was a lot of fun knee rocket stuff in this. Uh, I'm going to go first. 
Uh, are we just doing this episode or are we doing the whole series? Well, okay, we'll do two. One for just this episode, one for the whole series. Okay, so we'll do that. First episode. A- episode first. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll give this one a nine. Um, with that, that was a lot of fun. It was just a uh, just it never stopped uh, right. the entire way through. There was that one scene where there was a little bit of dialogue in the sanctuary. But other than that, it was just nonstop action from start to finish. Um, it was some crazy stuff with like we I mean, we're joking about knee rockets, um, but all the other stuff that's going on, which I know we're going to end up talking about on this episode. So I'm going to try not to spoil it. Go BB Nate. Um, for, for episode, um, this is going to be a little bit controversial, but I, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Not Ooh. that I didn't not like the episode. I did really enjoy it, but I honestly just think that it was like, okay, it was just, it was all action. If they could have found a better balance between the, the character development. Cause I feel like even though we had a lot of character development for Boba Fett, it would have been nice to have a little more transferring over to what he's going to be and not just. Okay. He's gonna have to fight. So overall, fun episode. Just wish I think it could have been more. Okay. Do you want to wait on our finale, or like the whole series episode uh, rating until the very end of this sure. segment, yeah, and kind of do that, talk about the episode yeah, yeah. first? Okay, go for it. Um, but I, what about I'll, you? Yeah, I'll give it a nine. Uh, it was everything I wanted it to 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 be. I wouldn't give it a ten just because you know there's always room for improvement. Um, but it was, it was great. I if Han Solo showed it. up, it would have been a 10. Honestly, if something like that happened, yeah, it'd probably be a 10, but okay. not, not complaining. And Bobo interestingly, wrote a rancor. Well, yeah, that's, that's true. why <laughs> I almost, I almost gave it a 9.5. Giddy up, baby. That. All right. But, um, you know, after watching this episode, like you were saying, Nate, I was, I was kind of thinking about like that, that line from Thanos in Endgame. He's like, perhaps I judged you too harshly. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I'm, what's funny is I'm not the only one who felt this way. I was at school and I was talking to a, a couple of my classmates who I sit next to all the time. And, um, I was, you know, I got their impression of, of the series before the finale and they're like, it's all right. I'm a little bit, up, mm-hmm. you know, frustrated from the last two episodes, but we'll see. Very, very similar to what I was feeling. And then I met with them after they watched it and they're like, yeah, that was great. I loved it. It was, it was awesome. So I'm not the only one who was in, in right. that boat and had that same okay. um, thing. But Bobo was awesome and he was everything I wanted him to be from the start of this um, this series, he was flying around. I mean, we had talked about that as we were like, right after we watched the episode, there was that scene when Mando and Boba fly out and they're just flying around, just <laughs> shooting everybody. There's that one guy that like tries to shoot him and they're both just yep. lighting him up as he's falling. I mean, it was everything we could have wanted, but right. most importantly, this episode wrapped up the whole series. Well, it, it connected each and every episode in some way. The mm-hmm. Tuscans, the Rancor, uh, Grogu, the Mando. I mean, literally everything Matt worked in the end, except maybe, um, no, well, no, I was gonna say the, the episode with Slave One, he didn't use Slave One, but that was where the modders were and stuff too. And that came in. So this episode did what it needed to do in that it wrapped everything up. Yeah. I, I really think that it, it does show that what that in Filoni we trust type um, situation with Star Wars when he's given the opportunity to, to help guide the whole story. And obviously he didn't write this entire no. thing, but he's just intricately involved with Favreau and with Robert Rodriguez in this uh, series to put it all together. And, you know, in the end, every piece of the story had relevance in that final episode. There were moments in this that did, I mean, it didn't have as much of a Purgles thing mm-hmm. as the Purgles showing up from season two, all right. of a sudden in season four, so, you know, being the solution to everything. But it was this big, mm-hmm. you know, curtain call of an episode mm-hmm. where everybody from all of the different episodes uh, came together and they all had a role in this finale, um, even going into what's what happens in the uh, the uh, end credit scene or the mid credit scene on that. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I really loved everything with it. The rancor riding was just so cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the, the best moment in the whole episode was when Grogu, A, tamed the rancor. That that made the Ezra fan inside of me really happy yeah. to see Beast taming again. That's and, true, yeah. Um, and then just, just Grogu decided that he was tired and he took a nap next to the rancor. He just, he just gave it a pat and he's like, all right, right here. This is good. You're warm. It did kind of remind me of like Natasha and Hulk. Um, <laughs> right? in this you know, hey big guy you know <laughs> like it, it 
what was so important about Grogu throughout this episode was the fact that he showed that attachments are is what gives him power. If it mm. wasn't for Mando, he wouldn't have been able to do the things he did. He loved Mando. He thinks of him as his father. And so he held people off. He saved Mando multiple times. And he tamed a freaking Rancor. That's so difficult. Right. So, And it was also really cool to see that... That Grogu, that baby Yoda, I just always want to call him that. Anyway, um, he's like, he has no fear. No. Mm-hmm. You know, we've seen this in some other stuff and it's almost, it's almost, you know, a childishness in the Mandalorian where he, he goes out and he does these battles and stuff like that. In this one, it didn't feel like that. No. I mean, if, if you're the, whatever the maturity level of Grogu is at this point in this story, which I don't really know. He's if older we can, than you. We can, well, we know that. Yeah. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Um, but we can't really peg down to like where he fits maturity level age wise. Cause he isn't speaking and that creates challenges for it, but that doesn't matter when there's a giant, you know, 40 foot monster looking at you like he's going to eat you. It doesn't matter. There is no such thing as just childish, you know, ignorance uh, in this. He stood up to fear without any hesitation whatsoever because he loves Mando mm-hmm. and he want and he knew what he could accomplish. And he just he just did it. And I did remember what in the episode thinking that is beast taming mm-hmm. through the force that is very Ezra. I was, like, I was like if Ahsoka finds Ezra I want Ezra to teach Grogu all he knows in that area and that would just be like that is cool the fan in me would just be screaming <laughs> yeah I mean it was great and uh, of course I loved seeing Bo ride the rancor I oh know, of man. course what more could you ask for at that point but we even got to see the conclusion of the feud between Boba and uh, Cad Bane in this episode. This has been a long standing rivalry uh, ever since the Clone Wars. So, you know, this has been what, you know, like 30 years going. Um, but what did, did you guys think that this episode was a good ending to this rivalry? I, I do think that ending to rivalries will never be satisfying for a lot of fans because mm-hmm. it's the end of a rivalry. And especially on something like this, because we haven't seen a lot of it. Um, very minimal interactions between them and they have this giant rivalry, but it's mainly seen from a few episodes in Clone Wars and a lot in the comics. So we're kind of just gathering from that. But I think that for what we know and for what was built even in this episode, there was a lot of tension with the first standoff and Boba deciding not to do that. And then the second one, it, it felt you felt the tension and the, the weight of the rivalry. And so I think that for what they did, it was a really well done ending for this episode. So Dave knew what he was doing. I, I don't know if this is the end, though. Do you oh, guys think that Cad Bane's Cad dead? Bane dead? But I think that his suit, his whatever that that thing is called out to somebody. So I'm wondering who that is, is really what's confusing me. There's a couple different th- thoughts on that. You know, we were talking on, on our Friday panel that we had with Lucas Pinkard mm-hmm. uh, from Reverend of Reprobate, um, Pete Fletzer from Around the Galaxy and Josh Sala from Marvel Let's Play. And that was a great Great episode, man. Those guys are awesome. No, it's not a shameless plug. I'm proud of that episode because those guys are amazing. And that was so much fun to have them on. So go back and check that one out if you haven't. But um, they were talking about where one person, I think Lucas suggests that it is sort of a beacon. It is. That's calling out. And and Josh was under the impression that it may be some type of a life support system that kicks in. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I don't think we're done with Cad Bane. I don't think that you create this character, you bring this character into live action in one episode and you kill him off in the next episode and just leave it at that. I don't know what that means. I don't know if someone's going to retrieve him, that there's a beacon, he's going to survive. You're going to have Thrawn maybe. You know, there is all of that. If you look at the photos of, uh, you know, go back and look at screenshots of Cad Bane in live action. It looks like under his coat, he's got an Imperial uniform on and it looks like he's got Imperial ranking insignias um, on that. And so maybe he's working with Thrawn or something like that. Maybe Ray Sloan from the the novel novels um, that, that everyone has sort of hoped would be brought into live action at some point as well. They could be retrieving him. He could be on life support and he could survive. 
it, you never know in Star Wars if somebody's dead. We the week before there was all this speculation about Cad Bane. It's the same type of a situation. Or Cobb Vanth, yeah, Cobb Cad Bane is in this one. Yeah, Cobb Vanth in the last episode, um, and we know how that that turns out uh, with this. So I'd love to see him come back on that. Maybe it's a flashback. Maybe we see more flashbacks um, in future seasons of the Book of Boba Fett. The because- Book of Cad Bane. Yeah, it could be. Maybe we do like two, three, a whole episodes of the Book of Boba Fett season two. That's nothing about nothing. just about Cad Bane, right? Yeah, exactly. That, that would work. So, um, but Dad, you were really convinced, even up until episode six, that Crimson Dawn was still going to show up. That never happened. Oh, it did. Yeah. No. See, the Pikes are are still part of Crimson Dawn, and so oh, okay. so in my head, Canon Kira is still behind the scenes, running everything. Dad, just just let it go. No, it's 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 the way it works. So. Okay. Well, just hypothetically, uh, you know, accept the fact that they didn't show up. Are you disappointed? Also, we didn't get any Han Solo either. I I have learned in. The Disney era of Star Wars, you know, again, uh, here's here's like a mini dad moment, I guess. Um, Not the main dad moment. But anyway, uh, growing up with Star Wars, you got what you got and you got three movies and that was the story and you moved on. Right. And you didn't have a chance to speculate like this. And then in the Disney era, you know, we've got we've got Clone Wars stuff. We've got rebels now we've got all these movies we've got these tv shows and you create these theories and these headcanons and you go from week to week Mm -hmm. trying to decide whether or not something's going to happen in the next episode or in the next movie and all of that and in the disney era if you haven't learned anything as a star wars fan you need to learn headcanon is great speculating is awesome do it have fun with it but just hold it very loosely when i woke up Wednesday morning, very early, 4 a.m., because I had stuff I needed to get done before we watched this episode, and I needed to know how long the episode was because you had to go to school. Both you guys had to go to college uh, classes and needed to know how long we needed to get up before uh, watching it. When I got on social media that morning just kind of to see what the gauge the interest and try hopefully not get spoiled, and there wasn't much conversation going on at, you know, an hour after this mm-hmm. thing aired – uh, my initial reaction was, okay, there isn't going to be anything massive. There's no Luke Skywalker showing up to save baby Yoda type moment in this. And so I was able to sort of let that go and then just enjoy the episode that we got. And it was a blast. And that is how you have to function as a Star Wars fan. Create the head cannon, have fun with the theories, speculate irresponsibly, but have enough presence of mind to call them predictions sure to go wrong so that even if you really think it's going to happen, you can accept the fact that it didn't go the way that you wanted it to. And so, no, I'm not terribly disappointed. Do I want to see those things? Sure. Do I think that we could? Sure. But I'm not disappointed. Well, I mean, that kind of begs the question though, as to like what, what now um, with this series? I mean, there was no real setup. Outside of you know the the mid credit scene with Cobb Vanth being alive, um, Mandu Mando Mandu Mando Mandu and Grogu are back together and doing their thing. Basically, it seems like back to square one, just with a little bit smaller of a ship. Um, and Boba is ruling Mos Espa, and everybody seems to be cool with that. They they respect him now, you know, just like what he wanted. But what happens now? Is there a season two? Do we get Boba and Mando season three? I mean, we kind of expected Crimson Dawn to be the big bad guys and Mando season three, but we don't have much direction right now. So. We, we definitely will. I have a feeling we will see Boba in season three of Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Um, I still I feel super confident in that. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get a book of Boba Fett season two. I do feel like in some ways this could be a one off, at least for a while, like how they're waiting to do Loki for another year. Well, actually, so, they just announced like... Owen Wilson just came out and said they're getting ready to start filming Loki season. Still, two. it'll it'll be at the end of this year, early next year yeah, by that point. Okay. But uh, I just think that if they're going to do season two of Book of Boba Fett, it'll be for a while um, that we'll see it again. But I do think that right now we're going to be seeing Mandalorian try his best to get back into the covert um, to follow the Creed again. So we're going to see him go to Mandalore. We're going to see him go to those mines. We're going to see him go through those trials. He's going to get baptized. He's going to get baptized. Um, and so will Grogu. Um, we're going to see so a little father-son father, Mando- father son bonding trip. 
does Mando like just like take off everything but his helmet and and get baptized? Is that how it works in, in this? Yeah, I don't think we have the answer to that. So it's just that get a little question. This could get weird. So this let's could, not go ahead. Um, yeah. But we'll have like, you know, Din Djarin's Mando va- vacation going on in, <laughs> in uh, season three. I think we'll see a lot of dealing with um, Mando trying to figure out, okay, well, should I let Grogu use his force powers? If so, how do I control that? How do I fix that? Um how should I keep him safe now that he's more powerful than me? Um, I'm not a part of a covert anymore, so he's being hunted by all sides. He has the dark saber. What does he do with that? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of questions we have now, mm-hmm. and we do have a lot of direction of what's going on. It's just we don't have direct direction from Book of Boba Fett. I do think, BB Nate, though, that your theory, um, I know we talked about it on mm-hmm. the last episode, of Boba Fett becoming the Nick Fury of the Mandoverse. Mm-hmm. I think that that actually is what's happened. I do. Too. That's what happened in this last episode. Yeah. All of these different sort of disparate characters came together and rallied around freeing Mos Espa, uh, freeing Tatooine, working underneath Boba Fett's leadership. Um, he did that. I do think it's interesting. You know, I don't know whether or not we get a season two of this. Yeah, they did call this officially the season finale. They didn't call it the series finale. So I think they have the door open. I don't think that there's anything more on that than them leaving it open in case they decide to do another season with it. But there is this moment at the very end of the episode where Boba Fett and Fennec Shand are walking through the streets mm-hmm. of Mos Espa and they're talking about, you know, people are bowing and he's, he's bowing back and all of this. And, and there's this conversation about he doesn't know if he's really cut out for this, for leading uh, this and, and, and everything that's going along with it. And then we go to the mid credit scene and you have the marshal in that. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think it might have been Josh Sala from Marvel. Let's play on our, our reaction episode or a panel that we did Friday talked about this, but he suggests somebody on the show suggested at least that, Boba Fett is going to actually concede the rulership of Tatooine oh, to the Marshal that. to Cobb Vanth because Cobb Vanth has ex- has proven himself as a leader of people so much so that in his near death his Freetown rallies around him and comes to Boba Fett's aid uh, because they knew that's what Cobb Vanth wanted them to do um, with this. And so all of that comes together. So now Boba Fett's able, he's now free to get in the slave one, fly around the galaxy, take his crew, do all the stuff that's going on, be a part of the Mandoverse without having to worry about Tatooine and the marshal becomes the ruler over I, Tatooine. I really like And that that's idea. what we see uh, going on there. I like that idea. And that does end up bringing that story to a close and bringing it all together with that. So we just, we, there are ways that we have to handle that though. Cause if Cobb, Cobb Vanth has been kind of a character that's, really been praised in this series a lot of people have loved him i've loved him i love his character i was so disappointed when he got shot and now i'm happy he's alive again but if they do a season two and they wrap it up like that i'd like to see more i'd like to see his stories so do we get another series following cobb vanth or do we just get a a cameo every other episode no i think that if we go to tatooine we get to interact with cobb vanth as the leader of tatooine but i think that they want to get off of tatooine that's one of the concerns even going into the obi-wan kenobi series is we're Mm -hmm. going back to tatooine we've got more episodes on tatooine everybody seems to go back to tatooine you know it's like everybody Mm -hmm. wants to go back to jakku kind of but it's tatooine now in the disney plus era um and so I think that when we go there, Cobb Vanth is a part of the story, but we aren't tied to the story being on Tatooine anymore because mm-hmm. Boba Fett's now free to leave and be, and go across the galaxy and do whatever. Yeah, unless they decide to make the graphic novel of Cobb Vanth. Huh? It's like the book of Boba Fett. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't get uh, it. Sorry. Didn't work, yeah, no. it didn't work at all. So. Anyway. All right. Um, well, I guess that's going to. Do it for, I mean, are you done? Oh, done? yeah, no, you, oh. you've got your... Okay, so good. Let's go ahead and, and do a little bit of a dad moment here. I am your father. All right, so the beautiful lesson of the book of Boba Fett uh, is the power of second chances. Now, we've seen redemption stories and arcs in Star Wars a lot, but Anakin's story ends on the second Death Star 
um, right after it starts, really, um, or after his redemption. And Ben Solo's life is sacrificed to save Ray right after his redemption as well. Boba Fett is different. Um, Boba Fett literally gets resurrected from a fate worse than death in the Sarlacc. He's rehabilitated both physically and kind of spiritually on the sands of Tatooine. And he comes out on the other side, a changed man. But there are still consequences from his past. His, uh, his past. Cad Bane is a symbol um, of this. His history with his nemesis nearly costs him his life. And the lesson of the book of Boba Fett is that we can change, but it doesn't mean that our history disappears. It will be really interesting, I think, going forward with this character. And I think we're going to see a lot more Boba Fett in the future um, to see how he continues to play this out in future stories. Well, uh, Book of Boba Fett has finished for now, and it's a little bit bittersweet because we won't be getting any Star Wars for a while, but... This series was a lot of fun, and it was a love letter to Boba fans all over. Uh, It took some time to build, like any good story, but the final product was a fun character piece that felt Star Wars all the way. Colorful speeders and all. I like the colorful (laughs) speeders. Me too. Me too. I was a big fan of those. So Anyway, all right. Uh, Well, it's it's time for some bad news, and we have a new source this week on our bad news uh, segment. And it claims that Star Wars fans are complaining about Star Wars. No. Go figure. This is not going to go the way you think. So we're recording this on Valentine's Day, and we're not really doing anything for Valentine's Day. I took mom to a movie on Friday night. We went to dinner and a movie. We went. Our tradition has become we go to the store on Valentine's Day. We go to the card aisle. Mm-hmm. We find cards. We give them to each other, and then we put them back on the rack instead of spending eight dollars per person on That's a card uh, that we're just going to throw away. And it was kind of fun because I gave her like three, four cards. That's good. You know, I can pick like funny ones and sappy ones and inappropriate ones. Did you? We won't talk about that on here. Anyway, um, yeah, I, well, anyway, um, uh, but but you guys uh, Saturday night, you went and did a banquet. Oh, we did. Oh yeah, that was cool. And yeah. you guys, like, I mean, I don't know about. Did, did you wear cufflinks? I did wear cufflinks. Stuff. I didn't wear cufflinks though. Well, uh, yeah, that, that, that shirt's still dirty. But anyway, what'd um, you wear? I wore Batman tie, tie bar. Still doing that, huh? Yes, sir. He's got to do it until the Batman comes out. Never. Even on Sunday, you did the same thing, didn't you? No, I couldn't because I did, the other shirt, the shirt I wore Saturday night, um, wasn't clean. So I had to wear a blue shirt. So I wore my Spider-Man tie, but I still <gasps> wore Batman socks. So Okay, okay. so you had some Batman on. What about uh, you, Samuel? Hutt? You wore on Saturday night? Yeah, I went all out. I uh, I wore my red Spider-Man tie, and I wore the uh, the gold Spider-Man cufflinks, which I love those cufflinks. Those things look so cool. Um, they're a little bit tough to get on, but once you get it, once you figure well, it yeah, out, they, it's worth you know, it. Just, it takes, takes some skills. I'm not as skilled as Kingpin is. That's um, true. And then <laughs> I wore the uh, the Spider-Man socks to go with it. I mean, it was all it was red, and it looked cool. That's saying. awesome. Yeah, and uh, I didn't. I didn't go to the banquet that night. I stayed no, home. Stayed what did you do? What do you I, do? I don't know. Anyway, everyone else shows. Um, but yeah, we uh, and then church Sunday, you guys wore you wore something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nathan already said about his. What did you wear yesterday? You went to church with Savannah. Mm-hmm. I did wear my uh, my Mando socks though, and uh, her mom, Miss Kathy, even noticed them. And That's they were cool. cool too. Yeah, so. I didn't have any uh, stuff yesterday on. Them. <gasps> yeah, you I, uh, I got to go preach at a little country church. It was really awesome. These sweet little people um, <laughs> up there at this country church that just it was awesome. They just were so kind. Um, it was an awesome experience. Was it awesome? It was awesome um we did that um but yeah uh then we came back and watched the super bowl and i know we joked about it a little bit earlier but we talk a lot about star wars stuff and and marvel stuff and even batman dc stuff uh, as far as as cufflinks.com goes but if you are a sports fan you need to make sure you check out cufflinks.com um and again like you know i congratulations to the rams congratulations even to the Bengals for getting there because the broncos can't even get into the playoffs uh, so i can't congratulate them but if you are a sports fan you're going to be able to find ties and cufflinks and socks and everything that you can imagine on cufflinks.com they've got a ton of stuff there Yeah, i mean they've got over three thousand different items um and again they don't just like their name would imply, it's not just cufflinks. They've got <laughs> your ties and your tie bars and and your socks and uh, money, your money clips. clips. Yeah, for for all you straight cash homies, straight cash. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they, uh, lots of other so, cool, cool I'm things. Still for, in all cash. of your 
all of your fandoms. Yeah, yes. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna go there and you're gonna do load up your cart with it, you know, f- find all the different stuff that you want there. Yeah, and you got to save money, so use the code Tatooine fifteen at checkout to receive fifteen percent off everything on the site with no minimum order required. So you can just go crazy. Whenever I hear that fifteen fifteen percent. I always think of Geico, Geico, but that's not what this is. No, this we're not sponsored better on that. Although that would have been a great segue. It would have, but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> no. We're talking about cufflinks.com. So order your cufflinks.com stuff. Go over to the uh, cufflinks.com today and make sure you use that code Tatooine 15 at checkout. Well, you want the bad news or the really bad news? All right. Headline one, Star Wars fans aren't excited to return to Tatooine in Obi-Wan Kenobi which is sort of a play off of what we ended up talking about just a little bit. Just a tad. I feel like that segment. was kind of uh, intended. Yeah, I kind of brought it up based on that. But anyway, this is from, uh, you know, strangely enough, from comicbook.com. We'll talk about that in a second. But this week saw the close of one Star Wars series set mostly on the planet of Tatooine and the premiere date announcement of another in Kenobi that's coming May 25th, which um, is, a, is a celebration for a lot of different reasons. The first and foremost being it's Grammy's birthday. Woo! Happy um, birthday. It's also that this year going to be the 45th anniversary of the release of the first uh, Star Wars film. And while I'm sure there are some Star Wars fans genuinely complaining about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, this is Star Wars after all, um, anyone who spent time with, uh, you know, kind of objectively gauging reaction on the social networks will tell you that this headline from comicbook.com and I said it on their post on on Facebook. I told them I felt this way is the worst in clickbait garbage. Um, fans took to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram to celebrate the announcement that the Kenobi series would be premiering on, as I mentioned, the 45th anniversary of the release of Star Wars. There really hasn't been any noticeable complaining about this series. Uh, instead, it seems to be one thing that nearly all Star Wars fans are looking forward to, strangely enough. The criticisms that are actually noted in this article as I went through it are easily seen as sort of humorous pokes at the planet of Tatooine. It's not really a complaint about getting Kenobi or even the setting of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And because I expect more from you, comicbook.com, I'm going to go ahead and just go and give you a full on clickbait level 10 because I was a little disappointed in that article. So. Just a little? A little bit, a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Lucasfilm is reportedly trying to rebuild the Jedi Order and change everything. Uh, essentially, this is a long article laying out the Jedi prohibition on attachment and why it doesn't work. And way down in the end of the article is this quote from Joanne Robinson, who used to write for Vanity Fair. The quote says, I've heard whispers on the wind. This is indeed something Lucasfilm is interested in. Just more broadly rebuilding the Jedi Order. A Star Wars story where somebody actually tries to rebuild the Jedi religion as one that allows for attachment. That's cool. Under Baby Yoda. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But Robinson then goes on to say what most Star Wars fans have learned over the years. A rumor about a project in development means nothing. Quote, I mean, but we should be clear. You can fill many football stadiums with all the ideas that Lucasfilm has have thought that they wanted to do, but then didn't end up doing, right? The, so that doesn't mean this is going to happen. So <laughs> it's an idea that's been kicked around potentially. And that's all. So this one's getting a clickbait level. All eight. right. Yes. All right. There we go. DB Nate. Headline Marvel rebooting its worst Netflix series? Question mark. Um, <laughs> no trusted and proven sources from Giant Freaking Robot this week. Instead, the source of this headline from an article on geekosity.com, that source is another article from itself that builds the entire story off of a quote from Michelle Yo. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yo, about Shang-Chi, describing her character as the keeper of a mythical city. Yo goes on to talk about magic and other elements that are obviously from the film she starred in, not about the Netflix series Iron Fist. But that doesn't stop Gigosity from speculating that she's actually talking about a reboot of the Netflix series. <laughs> the clickbait <laughs> level is nine. And that's their worst series is apparently Iron Fist. Yes. That's not, that makes no sense. If some uh, people might like Iron Fist. No, Iron Fist is generally considered the worst of all the really? Netflix uh, yeah. uh, Marvel series. Wow. Uh, with that. All right. Um, this is my segment now. It is. All right. Well, we're not the kind of podcast you go to for super Easter egg breakdowns of all the latest trailers. And we really don't do the whole trailer reaction thing. We've tried it. It's terrible uh, on an audio only podcast <laughs> where you're just like listening to it and going, ooh. Anyway, um, but we can't skip our favorite trailers from this past week. And there were... A lot of them. 
Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. So, did you guys, did, did you guys pay any attention to the Netflix like teaser that, that yeah, played I did. during that with that oh, yeah, whole yeah, little yeah. like they had a segment on the end about that new Adam Project. That looks good. Looks, I watched the whole trailer. It I mean, looks fantastic. It, they have a yeah. whole trailer out. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen a whole. Oh trailer. yeah, it's like a three and a half minute trailer. It looks oh wow, absolutely fantastic. We'll have to watch it after the show uh, is done recording because that's not part of what we're talking about, and I haven't prepared <laughs> for that. But anyway, all right. So instead of you know doing, we're not like I said in the in the uh, teaser for this segment. Not going to do like massive breakdowns. We're going to have plenty of time to talk about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and we need to talk about that. There's way more than we could cover on this um, <laughs> from that. But I want to get reactions. We're going to talk about four different trailers. A couple of them are for TV series. A couple of them are for movies. Let's start with Jurassic World Dominion. This one actually came out online a couple of days earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, but they with, played the full thing during the Super Bowl. But they did play the full thing during the Super Bowl, which I thought that was a kind of a wasted amount, a wasted thing to do. But anyway. <laughs> um, if you're going to release it online three days before, just leave release it online. But anyway, a uh, reaction uh, to that trailer. We'll start with you, Sam. Yeah, I was really excited after seeing it. I saw it early as well um, when they released it online, but them just showing, um, how like the dinosaurs are everywhere in the world. is really interesting. Cause like, that's something we haven't seen in any movie before, except I guess kind of that one movie. I don't remember. Lost world. One, lost world. Eh, we're, 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 this is this is gonna do it. The movie that shall be remain unnamed. The one we we do not mention. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I I really uh, was excited about that. Yeah. What about you, BB Nate? What did you I, think about that trailer? I'm really excited for this movie. I've loved the Jurassic World series ever since I was a kid. I had a birthday party for Jurassic World. Um, I love this series. Um, <laughs> I love the characters, and I feel like it's just a lot more. A lot, for some reason, I feel like it's scarier and a lot more fun than the original trilogy. So I'm super excited to see what they do with this. Um, just judging by some of the lines in the trailer, though, I think that Chris Pratt's character is going to die. Oh, no. So, yeah. yeah. What makes you think that? Well, when when the, the chick says, I forget the names. It's been so long since I've seen the movies. When Bryce uh, Dallas when Bryce Howard, Howard, the amazing Howard. director of so many different yes. uh, Star Wars uh, episodes now. But when she says, uh, come back to me, and he says, I always come back. That's usually bad. Yeah, that's a, usually a, a bad sign. I think it's cool that, well, I'll see that. You'll say that is that yeah. like is that later? Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. That. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, surprises uh, in the trailer. BB Nate. Surprises. I mean, there weren't many surprises. I was, of course, happy to see Alan Grant and uh, Ellie Slatter back in this this movie uh, and Jeff Goldblum and all the original cast is really returning. Even the Doctor from the original movies. Um, yeah, BD Wong's playing. BD Wong. It. It's yeah. it's a lot of fun. It feels like a uh, culmination of both trilogies. It feels like it's going to be just a really fun yet definitely the scariest so far. Um, it's just going to be really cool. I'm so excited for it. What about you, Sam? Any surprises? Yeah, yeah, that was a big surprise for me. The original characters. You didn't know they were returning returning back? Really? Oh, I didn't. Oh, it was announced a long time Um, ago. I think I may have heard of it, but I never really remembered it. So that was, that was a big surprise for me, which is exciting. I'm really excited to see that back. And, And I agree. I think having all of the characters in this movie helps with it feeling like a finalized ending. You know, it really feels like, all right, we're done. With the Jurassic series, you know, this is it. And I think it's going to be a satisfying ending. I kind of loved when any of the scenes that looked like Chris Pratt was out, like, on the range. Yeah. Like, wrestling wrestling up some dinosaurs, you know? Like, uh, rounding them up like buffalo or something Mm -hmm. like that. That was what it felt like on that. Um, Excitement after seeing, about this movie, after seeing this trailer. Is it higher, lower, Hmm. or holding? You go, Sam. Oh, higher. 100%. Yeah. I mean, again, like I said, seeing how dinosaurs are everywhere out in the world is such a cool uh, setting, I think. Um, and knowing the original cast coming back, I mean, all of it makes for, I, I yeah, I'm real excited for this. All movie. right, BB Nate, what about you? Uh, my excitement was already really high, especially after seeing the prologue before Fast and Furious 9, oh, which was so good, which was such oh, a good yeah. prologue. The whole reason we went to Fast and Furious I know, you can actually 9. find the whole prologue <laughs> online now, but, um, it was such a fantastic whole clip and then they released this trailer and it just made it so much better. My excitement is definitely higher. Really? And I'm so excited for this movie and Michael Giacchino's doing the soundtrack and the trailer <laughs> music was fantastic. 
fantastic for which this is movie. a really interesting thing to have happen because you know the original themes mm-hmm. were and, and, the, and the soundtracks were all John Williams mm-hmm. and now you get Michael Giacchino which you, you guys are super fans mm-hmm. of this guy you think he's the, this generation's John that's, Williams yeah. don't you yeah that's, that's what I, mm-hmm. I was saying yeah I think he's the, not that he's better no or even equal John Williams just, John, just John's generations John okay Williams. all right so we're excited about that, of yes. course. Okay, or that that movie. All right, let's talk about this series coming out just at the end of March, so a little over a month, like five six weeks away. Uh, Moon Knight uh, is a short spot. It was like a, what, a thirty second 30, TV 30 spot uh, on that. We'll start with you again, Sam. Reaction uh, to the Moon Knight TV spot? Oh, I mean, it was it was awesome. So I was over at a Super Bowl party with Savannah. and I, I mean, I was kind of looking around at the commercials at this point. Not really. Um, you know, not really paying too much attention to stuff. And I see that Moon Knight comes on. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. I mean, we'll probably have seen this before. And then I keep seeing like a little bit of a new clip show up and another new clip and another. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like all new footage. And I mean, I, I'm sure one of us is going to talk about this here mm-hmm. in a second, but when he like jumps off the roof and his cape does the moon thing, yeah, uh, it's like, I didn't think we'd get that in the series let alone see that in a trailer. So I was super excited with that. That's yeah. interesting. What about you, uh, BB Nate? Um, reaction to the trailer? Yeah, it was it was really cool. Anytime a trailer came on during the Super Bowl, I was also at a Super Bowl party for the youth at our church, and anytime a trailer came on, I would just yell, "Hey, hey, be quiet!" <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, twelve kids shut up because uh, trailers were coming on. I was I was definitely not the life of the party, but uh, this came on, and I just I was in awe of the how in 30 seconds they revealed so much new stuff and gave us a better feeling of the tone of this series a lot and i'm super excited for it and i can't wait for to see what they're going to do with it so did you see the purple magic coming out of the yes. purple stuff coming out of the pyramid yeah. at, at giza uh-huh. at the very moment that Ethan Hawke's character, and I can't remember what he's called right now, and yeah. I know that I'm, gonna get a, I'm a bad fan for that. But anyway, uh, he's literally saying the words chaos. There's chaos within you. Chaos. Guys, magic. that's chaos magic. Yep. That is Agatha Harkness yeah. purple magic. That, and that's going to tie into House of Harkness. It is going to tie all of yeah. this stuff Ooh, together. Um, it's going to be cool. Surprises. Uh, in the trailer, we'll go back to you, BB Nay. Surprises in this uh, TV spot. Honestly, thought that they wouldn't do this because it's a little campy, but they brought back the moon ring. <laughs> he has a moon ring, which is awesome. I was Did so- you just say the word moon ring? Is that yes. a thing? It's not what it's actually called, but it, it honestly, it what works. It, it? Yeah, it's like they kind of like the batarang. The batarang, but it's a moon ring. Um, I saw it and I did, you know, the whole Leonardo DiCaprio, the pointing the point. I, 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 I did that. I, I did that. I'm like, it's a moon ring. I texted Sammy immediately. He was like, bro, that Moon Knight trailer. I'm like, the freaking moon ring was in this tra- TV spot. I was so excited. That was left definitely the high point of the whole trailer for me because I honestly thought that that would be way too cheesy and campy for the show. It worked. But I watched. Worked I didn't so know it was well. called that, but I was freaking yeah, out when I saw it. So. Yeah, it's great. All right, Samuel, uh, surprises. I mean, aside from the cool cape move, um, honestly, getting more of the villain mm-hmm. um, was His tattoos. Yeah, like Weird. moving mm-hmm. tattoos. I don't know what that has to do, but I mean that and seeing just even more of the. The fractured mind of mm-hmm. ah, I'm forgetting his Steven. name, Mark Steven. Steve. Uh, yeah, Steve. he's Mark called Steven Specter. Yeah, yeah, something. Anyway, yeah. that guy. Um, seeing more of his fractured. He doesn't mind, even know his name, so. right? Um, <laughs> was was interesting to me. So yeah. Okay, uh, your hype for this this series. Um, now that you've seen this latest TV spot, we'll go back to you for uh, first the date. Um, higher, lower, or holding? Oh, it's higher, um, specifically because of the tone that we got. And Sammy and I have been watching more and more Daredevil, and it's starting to feel like it's going down that slightly more grounded, darker path of the, the, the at least the fight scenes. And it kind of feels like that. We're going to that point, and I'm super excited to see what they do with that. And um, I just, I'm, I can't wait for this movie. March is going to be such a good month. For TV superheroes. series. It's a series, not a movie. Is that, anyway, yeah. Anyway, Samuel the Hutt, excitement level, higher, lower, or holding? I mean, I, I'm I'm with Nathan a little bit. I do feel like it kind of feels like Daredevil in the grounded um, <laughs> side of things, but it also feels very MCU. It with does the magic and the supernatural, which is what we've come you know become accustomed to in the MCU. So it feels like it's going to be a good bridge between those two things. Um, and with all of that, it's going to fit really well into the MCU. So I'm excited. 
That's awesome. All right. You've been waiting for this one, Sam, for a while. Finally, we're going to be able to right. use your intro for the right thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. well we, we just do it for each other. That, that, is, that is something that probably should get an explanation at some point in the future. But anyway, uh, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. We'll let you go first on this one again. Sam, uh, reaction to this one. You were excited. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't much, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for it just that it's Lord of the Rings. I wasn't able to get super excited for it by like pointing out things I recognize because I'm not all that familiar with the story before the Lord of the Rings, um, which I think is a good thing for me. I know a lot of, uh, I mean, it can be tough if you've got a headcanon to things, but I don't know anything. So it's all, all of it's exciting. It's new mm-hmm. in Lord of the Rings. And I mean, some of those shots there towards the end look phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be a, a great addition to the Lord of the Rings. A uh, follow-up question. Did it feel like Lord of the Rings? Absolutely. That's the first thing I thought when I saw it, is it feels like Lord of the Rings. Okay. Um, All right, BB yeah. Nate, what is your reaction to that trailer? Uh, I was really surprised by it, honestly. It was it was showing up, and I'm, I was confused because they definitely were like, we can only pay for a one-minute TV spot, so let's just, let's just make it a one-minute trailer. But the stuff that they put in really showed how this series is going to be like Lord of the Rings. There were so many moments that it just felt like Lord of the Rings, like when Gladriel was just riding across on a horse across a field, just felt like Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. It felt like The Hobbit. And so it was, it was definitely just it, everything felt right. And I was super excited to see that. And honestly, they, they seems like they're starting to use some of the soundtrack as well from Howard Shore in the end. They got a little bit of a motif there for, mm-hmm. for a tiny bit. So that's also encouraging that they did that. But honestly, it was a surprise that this trailer was as good as it was going to be because it was super worrying. That's cool. All right. Surprises in it, BB Nate. Um, first of all, we got a t- TV 14 confirmation, which I is mean, that a surprise or yeah, honestly, it is a surprise. I was really worried. I know that the, the interview came out where he said it wanted to be for, for preteens, but still it's, it's a little worrying about it, but we got that and that's super encouraging. Um, Gladriel is just a warrior in this, which is something I did not expect from what I saw in Lord of the Rings. I saw a really crazy, weird white lady that yelled at Frodo and scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> that is a freaking it is a terrifying scene. Um, but but she's like climbing I- frozen ice waterfalls and just doing she all looks like this a beast, awesome man. She does, yeah. and I'm super excited that she she is definitely the main character of this series. Yeah. I'm super excited to see more of her. That's cool. What about you, Samuel? Had any surprises in it? Um, I mean, we didn't get really any, any plot whatsoever, which is not a bad thing, but we didn't see anything about Sauron in any way, you know, his evil form or the form he takes when he, you know, goes to the leaders and presents the idea of the rings. None of that, which is surprising to me. I don't know if they're holding that back. I think purpose. they're trying to keep him more mysterious and as, as a villain, just trying to up the scare factor of him because mm-hmm. he is a frightening character. Mm-hmm. So I think they're trying to up that. Yeah. So I think that was that was a big surprise. For I me. didn't. For, I don't know why, but I didn't expect to see hobbits, and we got a hobbit. We didn't um, get a hobbit. We yeah, we did. We did I get didn't a hobbit. See a hobbit. No. Yeah. When, did, yeah, when we, was there? We a did hobbit? get a hobbit. The very end, the one that's holding the hand of the. Oh, the, you think that's a hobbit? Is that a that's hobbit? a hobbit? That's a hobbit. I, I guarantee that was you that. A child. Nope, that's a hobbit. All right. Um, well, I'll take your word for it. All right. You hey, wish. Uh, it is. It's a hobbit. <laughs> um, I think that the narrator at, at the is is a hobbit in this. I think it's a hobbit telling the story, just like just like writing a writing a book. I do. I believe that. All right. Excitement about this after seeing the trailer we'll go with you first sam higher lower or holding um higher for sure i mean we didn't really have much to go off of before this except for a few pictures that were (laughs) released not long ago um so getting some actual footage is always exciting i mean i even got excited after the you know title release was a big deal um they're really keeping things under wraps at the moment so i'm excited for now and i can't wait for for more details to come out all right maybe nate higher lower holding on your excitement level yeah mine's definitely higher uh just the whole series is starting to of course it's it's a worry for everybody of how this series is going to turn out but it's seeming to shape up really well i mean just it was so cool there were so many cool moments like the the elf catching the arrow and then shooting it back it was just it, it felt like lord of the rings it felt like legolas was doing that it was awesome i'm super excited to see where this series goes very cool all right here's the one that everybody's been waiting for and we're <laughs> never going to have enough time to talk about never. it never uh so let's just kind of keep it pretty pretty surface uh level on this episode uh dr strange and the multiverse of madness uh we'll start with you this time bb nate dr okay. strange is your boy he is uh yeah. with this after seeing this trailer what was uh what was your reaction uh i was um 
so I saw the TV spot actually first. I was walking through the house and I saw Doctor Strange on the TV and I was in the middle of a conversation and I walked away from the conversation in the middle of it to watch the <laughs> rest of the TV spot. Um, and I saw a full trailer online and I'm like, no way they released a new trailer. And I just walked outside without letting anybody know. And I watched the entire trailer. People were looking at me like, why is he just standing outside? But I watched it and I'm like, okay, fantastic trailer. I cannot s- wait to see where this goes. Sam Raimi has... It feels completely different from anything he did with Spider-Man. It feels very MCU, which is something I was really worried about because the Spider-Man trilogy, we all agree, it's not like... It has a favorite. different feel for it the MCU. It does have a very different feel from the MCU, but he is putting his own vibe into it. You can tell that he has putting finger his fingerprint in it, but he's also making it just feel like Doctor Strange, and it is awesome. And immediately when he talked about dreams, I thought of the young adult book that I picked up from the library just on a whim and read The Fate of Dreams. And it was a fantastic book. And right as Doctor Strange 2 was announced and a few plot details were announced, I'm like, this book is definitely an inspiration for what they're doing. And it seems like they are. And I'm so I don't think excited. we've heard that from anywhere, but you feel like it's I definitely feel straight definitely. into it. Fate of Dreams was not a big book, but it was a fantastic book. And I, it, everything seems to be pointing to it because okay. dreams are a huge part of that. That's for, true. For and it even Strange. opens up the, the entire trailer mm-hmm. talking about dreams. Exactly. Uh, with this, uh, Samuel, had reaction to the trailer. Oh, I mean, it was it was awesome. I mean, there were so many cool little moments that we had kind of gotten bits of from the first trailer that was at the end of, of no way home, but a lot of new details mm-hmm. and some big surprises that we'll, we'll touch on in a second. Um, but it, it feels like a doctor strange movie, which is what, you know, I, I personally wanted, I didn't want it to feel like an M- Avengers movie because it's doctor strange had a very specific feel mm-hmm. um, the original, doctor um, strange the original doctor strange. And this feels like it, but to an even grander scale. Um, and I'm excited for it. I'm not sure how America is America Chavez, right? Yes. Fits in exactly. She They're, can control the multiverse. She, she has can? multiversal powers. Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I thought she was just mm-hmm. a girl who's strong and nah. punch stuff. Okay. Now it makes sense. And we're cool. We're but I was, I was just confused on that. So, <laughs> I, but that aside, I think it looks fantastic. All right. Surprises. So we'll start with you, Samuel the Hutt. I mean, <laughs> I'll just get it out of the way here. I think it's kind of the elephant in the room, but is that, that's gotta be uh, Professor it, it, X. It's Patrick I mean, Stewart at least. Yeah. He's bald. He's wearing the suit. I mean, it's got, I mean, I, when is Patrick Stewart not bald? But, um, <laughs> you know, he's, he's, it's got to be Professor we, X. It, we saw a leaked concept art a few weeks ago of these Ultron bots taking Doctor Strange. Is this oh, your surprise? Professor or is this? No, no, no. Oh, I'm okay. just building okay. on this to Professor X. And it's looking to shape up to be the same thing. So we're super excited about that. My surprise was the fact that they're bringing in so many of the animated stuff from What If. I mean, we saw in the poster that they released Captain Carter's shield is in the poster. Yep. Um, We saw in the TV spot, we saw Zombie Wanda and Zombie Strange, both from What If. Uh We also saw the classic Marvel editing really bad. We saw them when they're breaking through the multiverse. We saw them break into an animated verse. Now, the thing is, I didn't see it. um, It's it's like a split it second is, frame. Fast. It's so fast. But thing is, it doesn't look quite like what if art style. And I'm wondering if they're going to somehow bring the Spider-Verse Ooh. into this because it does look That's a lot like that. That's just too much. It, I saw I would, dinosaur. I wouldn't think. Are they going Jurassic World too? No. I, honestly, <laughs> though, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought in a little cameo of the Spider-Verse just to put something in there and then they can tie that into um, what, what, is, what is the title of the next Spider-Verse movie? In, uh, across the Spider Verse, across the Spider Verse, it would make sense, honestly. Mm-hmm. And so many of the things in the trailer were great. I'm loving how Zombie Strange or whatever is going to be the villain of this this whole thing. Guys, do you realize that the fact that Professor X is in this and the <laughs> setting in which he is? Yeah. You guys know what this is. This is the Illuminati, mm-hmm. and I'm not like in the weird conspiracy theory it's modern the thing. Illuminati. It's the Marvel Illuminati. It's not this, the one that Zuckerberg. It's no. up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I swear if they have a Zuckerberg cameo in the Illuminati, anyway, that'd be fantastic. Uh, you've got in, in that you have, they're the uh, Earth's brightest, most genius people. Uh, Makes uh, sense. Makes sense that um, awesome. And they're all the ones that help, that are on Earth governing the multiverse. And they're bringing Strange before this because he has violated the <laughs> principles of the multiverse over and over. And that's what's happening in this. Huh. And Professor X is on that in the comic books. Madam Web? No. No. 
Iron uh, Man is Iron on that in the comic books. Black Fanta- Panther. Uh, Black Panther is in it. Which some was se- apparently seen in the trailer. That's Black what Panther. Some people have suggested. Uh, Reed Richards from Makes the Fantastic Four. All of these things that are right now happening in Marvel are a part of this. I think that's what we're getting. We are getting um, the Illuminati in this. And there was an Illuminati eye. At least some people have said they've seen an Illuminati eye in the poster. So... I mean, that's kind of confirmation it, right it there. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, they're, they're, I think they're they not could bring back. in a, a Madam Web, too. I think it could fit. I mean, her whole it thing could. is multiverse. We'll yeah, see. So. Yep. Um, we did surprises, right? Did you get a surprise? Yeah. Yeah, you, yes, we yeah, did. Okay, we both did. Okay, all right. Excitement about seeing this higher, lower, or holding. We'll start with you, BB Nate. Oh, in the higher, of course. That's hard to do. It because is hard you've to do. Been, I've like, been super excited for this movie because Doctor Strange is my guy. But seeing, I was, I was also worried about this movie because they've gone through a director change. And I love the first Doctor Strange strange so much that I was worried that they were kicking him off of the second one and then bringing in Sam Raimi. And I was worried this was it was going to be a little too different from the first one, but it still feels a lot like Doctor Strange. I still have worries that Wanda is going to be too front and center for this movie and take away a lot of she did have a lot of lot time of story in this. She did. And I'm worried that they're going to take a lot from Doctor Strange. And that is it's concerning because Wanda is a fine character, but I'm here for Doctor Strange, not Wanda. But the um, best line of the entire trailer is when oh, she's yes. talking about, you know, you break the multiverse, you violate, you break all the rules and they make you a hero. I break the rules and I'm the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, and, or everybody thinks I'm evil in this. And then there's that moment where she's back in Westview, oh. in the house, on her knees, and there's an evil version of her or someone, some Something, other version yeah. of her with a, like, she looks broken. Uh, like, her face is, is scarred and, and all mm-hmm. this other. And she's like, oh, my. Yeah, that was it. All right, Samuel, the <laughs> excitement level for you. Is it uh, higher, lower, or holding? I mean, it's been, like, you know, this way across the board so far, but definitely higher. I mean, that's what a trailer's supposed mm-hmm. to do. It's supposed to get you hyped. And all these trailers did that. That's awesome. Um, but this one has got me especially hyped because there's all sorts of new stuff we're going to yeah. see. Absolutely. Well, honestly, it feels so good to be a nerd. <laughs> hey, um, all right. Now, there's so much coming over the next year. We didn't even get to talk about any of the new DC comment uh, content that's coming because they Oof. didn't release a trailer during the Super Bowl. Well, they did. Uh, well, they released before. it before the Super Bowl because they realized they didn't need to do it during the Super Bowl. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's honestly what a time uh, to be alive. So much fun. All right. Uh, movie moments. That's where we're at, right? Yeah, we got two movies uh, releasing this weekend that we've really both, I can think, looking forward yeah. to both of them. Mm-hmm. And we probably won't get a chance to see either this weekend, but we'll <laughs> explain that next on Movie Moments. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. Two new releases this week. Yeah. First one, Dog. Literally, that is the title of the movie. The description, <laughs> Dog, is a buddy comedy that follows the misadventures of two former army rangers paired against their will on the road trip of a lifetime. Army Ranger Briggs and Lulu buckle into a 1984 Ford Bronco and race down the Pacific coast in hopes of making it to a fellow soldier's funeral on time. Along the way, they'll drive each other completely crazy, break a small handful of laws, narrowly evade death, and learn to let down their guards in order to have a fighting chance at finding happiness. The director... Channing Tatum. The cast is Channing Tatum. Primarily. Um, this is <laughs> <laughs> primarily, yes. The studio is United Artists and it is rated PG-13 for language, thematic elements, drug content, and some suggestive material. Going, if we can, yes or no. Well, I, I want to see this Definitely. in the theaters. What about you, Samuel? Oh, absolutely. I think it looks great. It's it going to be a compelling like so much story fun. and fun. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I'm we so just excited. may not be able to see it because of Pensacon, which mm-hmm. we'll be busy with all weekend. Yes. Anyway. This next one I've been looking forward to for so long and so many directors <laughs> uncharted um it is about a street smart thief nathan drake of course i have an affinity for his name yeah you do be um, is right. recruited by seasoned treasure hunter victor Soli sullivan to recover a fortune lost by ferdinand magnella magellan magellan yeah, yeah 500 years it's time ago. to go back and take geography again right okay um, magellan <laughs> that's an actual 500 person? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm sorry. For all of you listening right now, I'm sorry. All right. Can I, can I continue? I'll explain this to him afterwards. Okay, let's go. Um, He's one of the greatest explorers of all time. I did not. I thought that Christopher Columbus was the big one. Okay, That's yeah, all I got. Can, That's can, can we continue? <laughs> no, this is good stuff. Okay, right. go. What starts as a heist job for the duo becomes a globe trotting white knuckle race to reach the prize before the loose, ruthless Moncada. 
Yeah, Moncada, uh, Moncada, Moncada, whatever it yeah. is, or who believes he and his family are the rightful heirs. If Nate and Sully can decipher the clues and solve one of the world's oldest mysteries, they stand to find five billion dollars in treasure and perhaps even Nate's long lost <gasps> brother, whose name is Samuel. Only, yes, and is four years older than him. What? Um, but only if they can learn to work together. The director is Ruben Flesher. The cast is Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. The studio is, of course, Sony Pictures, and it is rated PG thirteen for violence, action, and language. Going. If we can, yes or no? Absolutely going to see it when we can. Definitely. Oh, for Just sure. not this week. For of sure. The box office numbers of this week, Death on the Nile, which was surprisingly good. It was um, really good. It was we really should just stop for a second. <laughs> that movie was worth watching. Oh, in, in the theater. Definitely. It held yeah. my attention. And I was exhausted. Yeah. It, we were all exhausted. Really I was good. exhausted, too. I almost fell asleep during the commercials, but... And then not during the came, movie. No, nope, not during the movie. I yeah. was in, I was invested. It made 12.8 million domestic with a 33.5 million worldwide opening. And the next one's Jackass Forever. You won't say that word. Yep. Um, 8 million domestic and 47 million worldwide. They definitely made their budget back. And Marry Me <laughs> made 8 million domestic. Yikes. 16 million worldwide. That, I just think it's a, it's a mistake. It's another one of those films that they released on. Uh, wrong. streaming at the same time. Yeah. And then, and, and with death on the Nile coming out and the, no, n- honestly, it was a fine movie. Christy was, and I went and saw that on our date. It was, if you like Notting Hill <laughs> and you like JLo's music and you think Owen Wilson is an amazing actor, he is. a lot of fun, go see that movie. It's a fun movie or watch it on Peacock. Cause you can do it for free. And that's the problem. That's why it only did $8 million mm-hmm. domestic. Mm-hmm. So anyway, definitely. All right. Um, that's it. That's it. That was a fast Good movie job. moment. It was. Good job, BB Nate. All right, keep going. Yes. Do, do your segment. Now. Yes. The Court of Owls was my introduction into DC Comics and I haven't been the same since. This was, that was your introduction? Yep. I did not know that. Um, I just was at the comic store one day and like, cover looks cool. Let me pick that up. And I did. Um, <laughs> and all I want to see is them in the Batman. But I understand they aren't the most popular villains. So let me tell you all about who they are. Really? Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not a fuse? There's only one god, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Batman has no limits. One day, and it was after you know I was still in that kind of that period of Marvel's better than DC. That you just will never live up to Marvel. And I was reading the Marvel comics. And I'm like, dang, Marvel does not do a good job on comics. So I <laughs> I was looking around and I saw Court of Owls, and I'm like, that looks interesting. So I picked it up, picked up the paperback, and I went home and I read it in one day. And I'm like, okay, DC has found their footing with comics. So and this is a is this a Scott Snyder it story? Is. Okay, yeah, Scott he's Snyder, your favorite he's, he's, writer. He's my guy. well, Grant Morrison is my favorite. So writer. Uh, do we need to explain why it's so important to talk about? The Court of Owls right now? No, no, no. I, okay. I explain you got all it. that. All right, oh, go yeah. for it. Let's I got, go. I got this all covered. Got then covered let's do too. it. So I'm going to kind of give a description of who the Court of Owls are. The Court of Owls is a very vague group of villains in the DC universe, but they are insanely important to everything. They have existed for longer than even Gotham has. They built Gotham and have run it from the shadows ever since. They recruit and communicate by a nursery rhyme that goes, beware the Court of Owls that watches all the time. Ruling Gotham from a shadowed perch behind granite and lime. They watch you at your hearth. They watch you at your bed. Speaking out a whisper word of them or the send the talent for your head. All right. If you're going to do the nursery rhyme, I'm you got to do it like a nursery rhyme. I'm not going to rhyme it. I'm no, going to do it this way. You're, Beware you're like, the coin of No, 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 no. Dude, it no. doesn't go like that. They, don't, they sounds, won't sing it. No. Well, let's wait. I'm going to do it. No. They watch no, us all the no, time. No, I will. No, no. No? I'll uh, rhyme it if it means that you won't you, sing it. You just went through it really fast. Yeah. So okay. Slow, okay. Slow I'll do it, it. Can I do it? Yes. Go right. ahead. If you as long as you I won't sing it. You want, uh, all right. I'll do it. Without it. Beware the court of owls that watches all the time, ruling Gotham from a shadow perch behind granite and lime. They watch you at your hearth. They watch you in your bed. Speak not a whispered word of them, or they'll send the talon. For your head. Why do nurseries nursery rhymes always have to have a morbid twist to them? Like yeah. every single one of them. But it is a classic Gotham legend. But that makes it feel like something that would be a nursery rhyme in Gotham. That's that true. wouldn't make you think anything weird because mm-hmm. 
I mean, rock. Uh, you know, but, I mean, rock, rock rockabye baby. baby is twisted. Rose, uh, <laughs> Ring around the rosies. Yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah, but it, as a child, this can be pretty freaky and can make you think things. Yeah. But they have kind of two different people ish. In the court, the wealthy and powerful that run the court and decide everything that happens with Gotham. And then you have the Talon, Talons and the Owls, air quotes, that you can't see on a podcast. They're a genetic <laughs> mix between human and owl. Now, the That's Talons bizarre. are master assassins, and the Owls are b- between human and owl. Uh, they, they just are disposable things, half-dead, half-alive creatures with no brain, really. They're kind of zombie-esque little things. They're really creepy. They're, I don't remember that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're insanely creepy. So both of y'all have read the introduction story, um, the, the Court of Owls and City of Owls, on this group. And what are your thoughts on the storyline and the group as a whole? I mean, I'm going to be honest. I read this a long, yeah, time, a long time ago. ago. We were in uh, Colorado last, so it's been a good couple of years mm-hmm. or more. And I don't remember it well. I do remember enjoying it. And there were moments where I'm like, wow, this is intense, mm-hmm. which is, excuse me, not a bad <laughs> thing. I loved it. I thought it was great. I was already you know, familiar enough with Batman, uh, but I'd never heard of this court idea. And I, I thought... Happen. I thought it fit into Batman's story perfectly. Um, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it from the start. And I, I'm actually planning on trying to reread the story again. Mm-hmm. It's not too long. Just, you know, how many issues? It's it's about, I think, 12 yeah. at most. So it's not a huge run, but uh, a lot of a really, really good mm-hmm. story. Yeah, yeah, you guys turned me on to this uh, within the last six months mm-hmm. or so. And I, I downloaded it onto my tablet and read it on a flight when I was traveling mm-hmm. and couldn't stop. Um, I was super excited by this. I've read both um, stories, which were they? The, the court of owls and city of owls, city of owls. I read both of them and they were fascinating stories, super intense. And I, I sure, I think I maybe watched, I think I maybe have read those right before that first Batman trailer mm-hmm. came out. And so when I watched that Batman trailer, the original tra- trailer that mm-hmm. came out a few months back, my mind immediately tied to the Court of Owls. There's so many things in Definitely. the Batman that seemed to tie. And it just seems like more and more that's been happening with exactly. it. So. so, but for those who don't know the whole story of the court, let me try to tell it as quickly as I can and how it could relate to the Batman. So I'm going to be kind of going and off. he says everything. the Batman, he means. I mean, the movie, the, the Batman. Batman. All right. Yes. So the story starts out with Bruce wanting to rebuild Gotham to be a better city, which is a rumored motive for Riddler in this movie mm. um, to rebuild Gotham. The court doesn't really like that since they didn't initiate it. So they stick a target on Bruce's head for the Talon to collect. Now, all of this is set during a mayoral campaign, which, again, might be happening in this movie, too, but hasn't quite been confirmed. And ties to that prequel book. Exactly. Because Bruce's father, Thomas Wayne, in is the beginning, is, when he dies, he's running for mayor. Mm-hmm with that so there's a connection exactly. there too. yes there is and a big location in the beginning of the story is wayne tower and the wayne terminus is actually referenced in the story as a way for the court to get around since it connects all the subway tunnels no in way. the city yes um so there are a lot of similarities happening right now aren't there there's so i think that's what triggered on. it for me was the wayne mm-hmm. tower stuff and the terminus stuff in mm-hmm. the original trailer yeah yeah it's really really cool but the talent attacks bruce in the tower and a bunch of other detective stuff happens that doesn't really apply to the movie but we do learn something <laughs> Very curious. Bruce's first case was actually trying to find the court when he was a child because he was convinced they were behind his parents' oh, death. Oh, yeah. Now, we actually have no clue how Bruce's parents died in this universe. Ooh. We just know that the killer is at large and was never identified or found. Do y'all think they make the court responsible for his parents' death in this universe, especially since Thomas Wayne was running for mayor? I I think it could happen, and I really, really hope so, because... This they they said they're not going to really go into the origin story too much in this story. But the reason why is because it's so familiar. Everybody knows the story of Batman and how he became Batman, just like Spider-Man. That's why they've done it differently in the MCU. And it works if they do it this way. It'll feel familiar and be fresh for all the fans of Batman. So people who are maybe new to Batman still can get into it. But fans who are familiar it's this whole new mm-hmm. story. I I love that idea. I do. As soon as we started talking about the prequel book mm-hmm. and Thomas was running for mayor, 
my mind went exactly to this being the storyline mm-hmm. of this. I don't think that they make this movie the origin story. I don't think they go back no, and do this. They don't. No. I do think that they bring the Court of Owls into it and set that up for the future, okay. which is similar to kind of what they ended up doing in No Way Home, where they make that something that happens later on. I think we find out about it later on, but it's not the same as, you know, the the thug outside the mm-hmm. movie theater. There may be a thug outside the movie theater, but they maybe have been sent yeah. um, by the Court of Owls. And I think mm-hmm. that's where it's we very go possible. That. Now, after the court attacks Bruce and the manor, which is such a cool scene. I love that. The court decides to move on to another approach. Now, this is getting into purely speculation, as we know nothing about who or if there will even be a Robin in this universe. So I guess this is the prediction sure to go wrong part of this. <laughs> All right, there we go, BB Nate. Now, um, in the comics, the court tries to recruit Dick Grayson into the court because apparently he was being raised to be a part of it. Eventually, oh, yeah. he joined the court as a double agent. He learned that the court wasn't specific to Gotham City, but they have branches, see what I did there, um, around <laughs> the world, and they aren't called the Court of Owls. They're actually called the Parliament of Owls. Okay. Because a group of owls is called the Parliament. Mm-hmm. Now, do y'all think they introduce Dick Grayson through the court in this universe? Also, Damian Wayne was a member of the court for a, a oh, short yeah. period in the comics as well. I, again, I think this is another great way, fresh way to tell a familiar story. He's not some orphan acrobat now that gets picked up by Bruce just because he felt sorry for him. It fits even more and making this, it would make the court an even more centralized villain or antagonistic force in this universe. Love that idea. Yep. I do like the idea of bringing them in there. I hope that um, it's... Here's where here's where I want to. I think the court of owls goes. I think that the hope is, <laughs> and now after even some of the initial critics reviews are coming in, and uh, they seem to be pretty excited with this movie. They're Not just the critic positive. stuff, but the studio seems mm-hmm. to be excited about this movie. You don't release the um, have a have a special screening in IMAX three days before that is going to be public unless you are fully confident that that public reaction for those people that are spending all that money to go to IMAX to do this are going to be mm-hmm. like 100 on Rotten Tomatoes nearly right mm-hmm. you that's what you want and so they're excited about this I think that they were hoping that that would be the reaction and because that is what they're going to get that this is going to become the WB Batman verse. Um, yes. with going forward and they need a villain bigger than the Riddler. Riddler is the villain for this story. Right. There is a deeper story going on, a bigger villain, a bigger bad guy that's going to carry through out all of this series, mm-hmm. not just the films you have, uh, Gotham PD, mm-hmm. right. As a series yes. that's coming on HBO max, you have, um, a Penguin mm-hmm. series coming out on, on HBO Max. Do we have anything else that's been no- Not announced? Not that it's been announced, but we're expecting more. You know, if we get more and more and more of this stuff, you've got to have a bigger villain than just your villain du jour, the mm-hmm. villain of that episode or whatever. And I'm as you're saying that, I was trying to think through other superhero universes that we, we have currently, whether it's the current DC universe, the DC animated, Marvel... I'm trying to think none of them really have this centralized antagonistic group that's underneath the surface for everything. Not one thing that I thought of. And you did early on in the MCU with Hydra, but they exposed Hydra. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, becoming a, and shield and all that stuff well, was, early on yeah. in the phases. And so then it became you had to have something bigger. So then it became Thanos. Right. Um, and all of that. But you don't have like like you're saying that this centralized idea is mm-hmm. not present. Right. And so that I think will help set this movie series apart from just being another superhero franchise. Definitely. Um, That's yeah. cool. I'm yeah. excited. Me too. Excited. Do you have any crazy predictions? for the That was my prediction. Movie? I mean, <laughs> it's more of a hope. I don't want to mm-hmm. predict one way or another that that's showing up. I desperately hope that it's going to happen. And I'm going to try not to have, you know, have too much of a headcanon with it. Uh, but if I were to have a prediction sure to go wrong, I, 
I think maybe we, we see like a Robin at the end or something. That or, or a Joker cool. character but shows up. But the thing up. is, right. we have no post credit scene in this movie. Which is good. This so doesn't, it needs to not have that. Yeah. Because that is an MCU thing. I mean, it has they, a little Easter egg in the, the credits is what they said at the end of the credits, but, but still. they don't need to have post credit scenes. Mm-hmm. They don't need to try to be copying Marvel. They need to do their own thing. And I think that's what this is, is doing. Definitely. So. Well, let's hope the court is actually in this movie. And I would love it if they were the main villains throughout the whole trilogy. But Wait. the Batman. And what we know there's three movies or no but they said that it's if they're going to be doing it gotcha. then it's going to be probably a trilogy but the batman is almost here and with that the answers to all our questions and i cannot wait absolutely well this is uh good job BB thank Nate. you good job Nate. that that was fun for you wasn't it it was <laughs> that's cool all right anything else you guys want to talk about anything else so kit harrington claims he's clueless about his role in the mcu and still waiting for marvel to call for black knight return that's not bad news he literally said that yeah so, so that's wow. kind of weird maybe but... because they aren't sure that that Maybe they kind of want to uh, forget a turtle. Forget a turtle. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. Wow, that many, you're being like the toxic. I, many Star Wars of you, I know many of you love Eternals, and that's fine. And it's actually going to play a big role into some mm-hmm. of the stuff I have a feeling coming up. But anyway, uh, yes. Yeah. BB Nate. Um, DC has released a 2022 teaser. We talked about this a little glimpses bit. Glimpses at Black Adam, The Flash, Aquaman two, and more. What was your favorite moment in that teaser? Gosh, there were so many. I loved seeing Doctor Fate. Pierce Brosnan is going to kill it. But I also loved seeing the Flash and his little lenses. Yeah. That was really cool. I'm, I'm super excited for this whole thing. Uh, uh, a news flash. Uh, StarWars.com is inviting you to Han and Leia's wedding in a new novel that was announced today, um, meaning the day we recorded this, which is Valentine's Day, <laughs> um, called Star Wars The Princess and the Scoundrel. And so for me, the first thing I thought of was The Courtship of Princess Leia, which was a Legends novel that came out shortly after the Thrawn trilogy, uh, Heir to the Empire trilogy and all that stuff. And it sounded like it was just the uh, new version of that. But here's what's really interesting. Uh, a large portion of it takes place on a galactic star cruiser called ah. the Halcyon. Um, <laughs> and they announced that today. So it is a complete tie in to uh, everything that's happening at the Galactic Star Cruiser in the, in, in the uh, galaxy's edge with that. So, um, again, we talked about this earlier, but um, on Friday, we're going to retell. Uh, from start to finish, the three of us um, in a special Friday episode retelling the story of Turbis the Porg. And I want to hear it. I'm going to I'm going to function in this as the interviewer, not the one telling the story. All right. And you guys are going to be the ones uh, to tell the story because I think your perspective will be a, be a lot of fun uh, for everybody here. So check that out on Friday. Thank you so much, Cufflinks.com, for sponsoring the show and not just uh, this episode, but sponsoring us since like all the way back in October. Thank you so much for the, all that you've done uh, to support the show. We certainly appreciate that. Make sure, sure you check them out. And for all of you listening, uh, those of you that listen every single week and have, like we talked about earlier, uh, uh, allowed us to be you know in the top 100 in our category on Apple Podcasts uh, since January. Thank you so much uh, for listening uh, to Tatooine Sons. For all of you new people listening to it, thank you for being there. We hope you will subscribe and be a part of this. Um, you guys are why we do all of yes, this. Yes, if you had a good time listening, it would be awesome if you could share this with your friends. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and of course, the show, it's only a small part of the Tatooine Sons world. So if you if you enjoy us that much, you know, be sure to like us on Facebook and join our Facebook discussion group. And follow us on Twitter to get in on all the action and keep up to date with everything we got going on at TatooineSons.com. And I know I've mentioned it before, but follow the show on the podcast app that you're listening to us on so you don't miss that Friday's episode or any episode coming up. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Podchaser.com uh, and or whatever uh, podcast app that you prefer. Um, anything else that you guys are ready to say? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you always. This party's over. Don't get technical with me. Joy, please. Yep, yep.